Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in the previous lectures, we have seen how we can deal with the streaming data where we have ingested some real-time data streams into our SDP sandbox by different ways. We have used Kafka, we have used Flume in the previous lectures to bring this real-time data from log files, telnet port or the command line also. But now let's talk about how we can process that data further to get some meaning out of it. So Apache Spark Streaming API will provide us the capability to do the same. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as you already know, these data streams are unbounded sequence of data which arrives continuously into your system. So there could be many sources like social media websites or else any web blog. So whenever you click anything on the web page, it will get recorded and come as a logs and the website owners tend to get this data and stores it for their further analysis and get to know the customer behavior. This can also help improve the retention as well as the customer experience of any product like e-commerce website. It also helps in autonomous vehicle where it gets streams of data in real time from loads of sensors and process that data to take the decision whether to stop the vehicle or accelerate or turn as well. And this data needs to be processed in real time. So that is the reason Spark Streaming comes into picture in 2013 as an extension of core Spark API. And this will provide you some scalable fault tolerant stream processing of our live data streams. So previous lecture, we already know how to ingest this data. So this data can be from many sources like Apache Kafka, Flume, Kinesis, as well as TCP sockets. And we can process that data using complex algorithm and they can be expressed with different high level functions like mapping, reducer function, joining and window function. I hope you already know and we have seen in our previous Apache Spark tutorial. So if you don't have any idea about Spark, I'll highly recommend you to go and watch first to get some basic idea of Apache Spark architecture and how it processes the data. But those lectures were all about batch processing. But here we are going to deal with real time processing. So let me tell you the internal working of it. So first of all, the real time data is received and divided into batches of Spark streaming and these badges are then processed by Spark engine and generates a final stream of data in batches. So this is also known as a discretized stream or in short we can say it as Spark D stream. So this nothing but represents the stream of data which is divided into smaller batches and these D streams are built on Spark RDD which is nothing but a JVM object which represents the data in Apache Spark. So Spark RDD, which is nothing but resilient distributed data set, you already know. And we have seen in our previous lectures. So once the data comes, it gets divided into many RDDs and it is represented by the D streams. And it allows a seamless integration with other Spark APIs like Spark MLlib and the Spark SQL for better data analytics. But what really is the need of Apache Spark? Why can't we do it with Hadoop? That's our next topic. So as you already know, organizations are generating huge amounts of data and they want to get a value out of that real time data. So for example, like online transactions, social networking websites and census data must be monitored and processed in real time. And that is the reason real time stream processing is very important nowadays. So for example, if you have like online purchases, which requires all the data like date, time, the item which the customer is buying as well as the price of that product and it should be stored and ready for organization to analyze and make the prompt decision based on the customer behavior and it is very important to improve the customer retention and it also very vital in banking sector to train their fraud monitoring models to detect the fraudulent activities in the banking transactions. So that is the reason there are some continuous processes which are needed to fulfill these requirements. So first one will be we need to ingest the streaming data from various data sources like the website logs, IoT device data as well as social media data by using some of services like Apache Kafka, Flume or Kinesis. Then we need to process that data in parallel 
on a cluster because the data would be the big data and it is generated in huge amounts so we need parallel processing and this result data set should be written to any of the sources like cassandra edgebase and kafka also so you may ask what really is the need of apache spark specifically for this requirement so the first one is hadoop is way more slow so as you already know hadoop uses like batch processing approach which utilizes map reduce which converts a job into mapper and reduce a phase and it is very slow if you compare it to the direct acyclic graph approach which is used by apache spark and we have also seen this difference in all our hadoop course where we have used map reduce the job was very slow and when we switch it back to like the tez execution engine on apache spark it was more like 10 times faster because of the in memory computation and the dag approach so that's why spark streaming is a good choice and it also has the fast failure and the recovery process so there might be the chance of cluster node failure or the slowing down of the nodes because let's be honest this data nodes will be the commodity hardware which could be cheap and easily replaceable and there is a high probability that any of the node will fail and burn down the process but it will not happen in spark because it uses fast failure recovery which bypasses the task which was originally assigned to the failed node to some other available node and doesn't affect the data processing it also has the features like load balancing so there is a challenge of the continuous system is uneven allocation of this processing loads between worker nodes and it is like one of the biggest bottleneck in the system and it is very likely to happen in large clusters so that's why load balancing is very important which spark will provide you then also the next big advantage is using apache spark the streaming data can also be queried interactively or combined with the static data sets so this integration is very hard to implement if you are not using spark and it, it will not give you the continuous system that provides you the ad hoc queries and a single engine must handle the batch and the last and the most important is you can do advanced analytics by using the machine learning library of apache spark which is mllib and a spark sql so because of its architecture spark streaming well integrates with other apis like mllib as well as spark sql which give you capability to do some advanced analytics on your big data so this is why spark streaming is very popular in many fortune 500 companies now let's talk about some of the sources of apache spark streaming so like every input d stream is associated with a receiver object which receives this data from any of this source system which is given here and as you can see in this figure spark streaming can well integrate with various sources for streaming data sources it can integrate with flume kafka kinesis and if we talking about static data sources it can take the data from edgebase cassandra mongodb postgresql etc and it can also gets the data from basic sources like file system as well as socket connections and it can write the data different things like parke kafka edgebase cassandra and so on so because of this spark streaming is way more popular for processing data streams in real time so now at last let's talk about the spark streaming architecture so as you already know that the main component of spark architecture is a d stream which is also known as discretized stream so this spark streaming discretizes the streaming data into some tiny sub second batches instead of treating it as a single record at a time so the receivers of the data accept it concurrently and buffers it in memory of spark workers so in the next stage the spark engine processes the batches in a matter of millisecond and output the result to other systems so unlike the other traditional data processors spark task are dynamically assigned to the worker nodes based on their data location and the available resources so it does that in the very optimized way and that is the reason spark is very faster than other data processing engines 
so it will ensure you the better load distribution and faster fault recovery using this technique so this each batch of data uses like rdds which are nothing but resilient distributed data set which is nothing but a core abstraction of the data set in spark and allows the streaming data to be processed by library or the spark code and it could be written in many languages as you already know like we have done our spark implementation all in python so that's why it's very popular among many developers so i hope this lecture was a bit theoretical but you should know the basic of spark streaming before jumping off and getting our hands dirty with spark streaming but enough talking in the next lecture let's take one example and we will do some hands on on spark streaming so i'll see you in the next lecture i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching